It's time to take a look inside ECSU Mighty Vikings basketball. This is Vikings Coaches Show on WRBS 89.9. A happy, happy Thanksgiving to you and welcome to Viking Coaches Show. I'm Clay Mercer and I'll be your host as we talk ECSU Mighty Vikings basketball with head coach Sean Walker. Coach Walker, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Uh, Coach, let's get right into it. A brand new season of Mighty Vikings basketball is upon us, and the team has already played about five non-conference games. Just to give our listeners a little recap, the season started back on November 9th with a (coughs) seven-point loss to West Virginia State. Uh, The Vikings' next two games will be wins over the University of Virginia's College of Wise uh, at Wise and Winston-Salem State. State University, followed by a couple of losses to Catawba and at number 20, Barton. Uh, we'll talk more about this past Tuesday's game momentarily, but Coach, many people are talking about the Vikings' brutal strength of schedule early on. How beneficial have these tough matchups been for the team so far? You know, Clay, I'm not sure at this point mm-hmm. um, because the schedule is very difficult. One of the first um, things that I did when I stepped on the job was to take a look at the schedule, and, and Coach Saunders and I um, – joke very often about what he was thinking about when he made this schedule. Um, The (laughs) schedule is is very competitive, to say the least. Very much so. Um, And, and, uh, you know, we've got our hands full with it. So I'm hoping that we'll definitely be battle-tested when we come down to the back end of the season. Um, We do understand that championships are won in February and March and not in in, in November and December. So uh, we can only be better for it. Um, So, so. It's very probable that our record won't look as as we would like it to look early mm-hmm. in the season, um, particularly since uh, we're still learning each other as a team, mm-hmm. and and I, my, and the players are still learning, you know, some of the things that I would like them to do. But I think moving forward as a program altogether, and certainly with this team, uh, as we move forward to the back end of the season, we'll be all the better for playing a very very difficult and tough schedule. I believe that also, and uh, the marquee victory I think so far for a lot of fans was the six point win over Winston-Salem State back on November 14th in the Vaughn Center. It was the first home game of the season for the Mighty Vikings and for you in your return, a good crowd on hand to support the Vikings. Uh, how did it feel walking out there and receiving the love from the fans in the Vaughn Center? Yeah, first, first and foremost, I mean, as you stated, what a, what a wonderful crowd. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we, we almost had a packed house. and uh, Just keep in mind that we had a packed house uh, at 4 or 5.30 men's game That's right. that filtered into uh, to, 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 to women's play. Um, so that felt good to to see the anxious anticipation of 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 a new team. I won't say it's because Sean Walker uh, returned, but <laughs> I'm hoping it was because our young men have uh, made men's basketball, uh, Viking basketball, something to want to be watched and seen. Um, and so uh, it was exciting to be back, exciting to be back on the sideline, exciting to come out of that locker room like I've done for for, for 13 to 14 years. Um, and to be able to do it again is not only uh, exciting but also a blessing. And I'm very uh, happy to be in that role. Yeah, definitely. A great feeling in the Vaughn Center. In that game, junior center Ty J. Byers recorded a double-double, 18 points and 13 boards. He gives the Vikings a type of post presence that hasn't been there in a while. Uh, he had a big impact on that game, and it seems like the potential is there for him to get even better. Well, Tajay was phenomenal against Winston-Salem. He's a rim protector, a runner. He had not been known as a scorer. Uh, and I, I joke with him all the time. I told him you had 13 rebounds, you had six offensive rebounds, mm-hmm. and you missed six the six shots that you missed, you rebound them all. <laughs> um, and so, uh, but he is definitely a, 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 a great asset for our team. He's long, he's tall, he runs, and he's very smart. He's probably um, one of our smartest basketball players. Wow. And he's getting better, mm-hmm. um, and hopefully he'll continue to get better. Uh, he's got to learn. He had, he had six or seven block shots that night. Mm-hmm. That's right. And he's got to learn uh, how to stay on the floor and when he can block shots so so he can stay in the game yeah. and not get in foul trouble, which he did against Catawba. But um, we're excited about having him over the next couple of years and certainly his best basketball is ahead of him. Is that something that is difficult to teach for a player of, <coughs> of his size who wants to block every shot that he possibly can? Is it hard to teach or is it just something that the player just has to learn on his own as time goes on? Well, I don't think you teach kids to block shots. I mean, it's it's kind of an innate ability um, of getting themselves in the right position. Now, this is what I will say to you, Clay. I, I said to our, our team that the product of having six block shots is also a byproduct of us getting beat off the dribble. Mm-hmm. Um, block, shot blocking is a help defense kind of kind of mentality, and so thank God that Tajay was standing back there and was able to change 
uh, 15 or 16 shots and block six of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of, the, one of our focal points is getting better defensively. And so as we get better defensively, Tajay's got to be, become a better on-ball defender, standalone defender, um, where shot blocking maybe is not in the equation, but he can stand, stand his ground and make people shoot over top of his 6'11 frame. You're listening to Viking Coach or So. Clay Mercer here with ECSU men's basketball head coach Sean Walker. And coach, this past Tuesday, the Vikings were back on the road as they traveled to Wilson to challenge Barton College. The Bulldogs were ranked number 20 in the latest Division II basketball poll, and they moved to 6-0 and with an 88-64 victory over ECSU. Another tough contest on the road like we talked about before, but it found the Vikings only behind nine at the half. Were you pretty pleased with the team's first half effort? Well, you know, let, let me start by saying that at this point we're learning a lot of things. Our team's learning a lot of things about themselves that I kind of see every night in practice. Mm-hmm. Um, we were down nine at the half. In some uh, segments of that game, you, we can look and say the mistakes that we made got us down nine. And we can also look at that game and say some of the mistakes that Barton made kept us in the game. Uh, we were in a little trouble first in the first half, even being down 39-30, because everything that we was that we were getting offensively uh, was not scripted. We were kind of makeshifting buckets. In the second half, we found more difficulty scoring. Mm-hmm. Um, Barton's a really good team. They move the basketball. They space the floor. They have a great understanding of what they're doing. Um, Coach Ron Levensey actually recruited me at Campbell University oh, wow. as, a, as a freshman in okay. 1990, so I've been knowing him. As as a as a as a basketball player and as a as a coach, we've coached against each other uh, a lot of years. Um, so that task for us proved to be one that was a bit lofty. We got down by over thirty points in that game, mm-hmm. um, and just didn't look good. So um, obviously, it lets us know that we have a tremendous amount of work to do to get to the level that a Barton College is. Um, and I'm hoping that we'll we'll be able to learn from it. it it's, it's a difficult thing to stand through. It's a mm-hmm. difficult thing for our players to have to play through. Um, but the, but that process hopefully is going to be one that we're going to learn from. Uh, take take very important uh, – we're going to take very, very, very important aspects from that game and try to build ourselves uh, to be better for it little by little. Yeah, definitely. And Justin Faison will lead the Vikings offensively with 10 and will finish with a team-high 15 points off the bench. Rebounds and points in the paint were in favor of Barton in that game. How concerning is that for you and the coaching staff moving forward? It's very concerning. Um, well, there again, it is not something that we are learning in the game. We're learning that's in practice. This is a this is an ever growing conversation. Uh, we're getting out rebounded each night, and my and the issue for our, uh, uh, for me as as coach is that we're not rebounding the ball when other teams miss. Um, when 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 you give up offensive rebounds, more than likely three-point shots are going to happen. Mm-hmm. We're giving up an extreme amount of three-point mm-hmm. shots. We are giving up – we're getting plus 10 on the backboard every mm-hmm. night. And and a lot of that is because we're just fundamentally out of sync. Yeah. We stop playing when the shot goes up. Mm-hmm. We're watching the ball. So we're watching a lot of film and talking about when the shot goes up, what our responsibilities are um, to complete the possession. Uh, and, and so we can get in transition. And we, we have not – uh, been able to master that at all, and that's more of a mental thing, more so than a physical. And it's a it's it's a major challenge for us. It's been a major challenge. It's something we're going to have to overcome if we are to be able to turn our season around. Definitely, the Vikings record now stands at two and three, but there's much more basketball to be played. Coming up, we'll preview this weekend's contest at USC Aiken and check on any injuries impacting the team. Sit back, enjoy more Vikings coaches show coming up here on WRVS 89.9. Get your tickets now to see the Mighty Vikings in action online at ecsuvikings.com. WRVS 89.9 needs the support from listeners like you to keep this radio station on the air. Consider making a tax-deductible donation online at ecsu.edu slash WRVS. It's quick and easy to make a donation with your credit or debit card. It only takes a short time to keep us on the air for a long time. Support WRVS 899 today. 
All right, welcome back to Viking Coaches Show. I'm Clay Mercer, and with me is ECSU men's basketball coach Sean Walker. Now, remember, if you have a question or a comment for the coach, you can send us an email to wrvsfm at gmail.com or tweet us at wrvs899. Now, Coach, one player we haven't talked about on today's show is sophomore Zach Hobbs. He had a strong game against Winston-Salem State, but He's been hit with a little bit of an injury and didn't play on Tuesday night. Let's get a little injury report from you. Tell us a little bit more about Zach's issue. Well, Zach's dealing with a, a, a nagging um, groin or knee. I'm not even really sure what mm-hmm. it is. I know it kept normally keeps him out of practice on the day after the game. And then, uh, you know, yesterday's game, he just couldn't play, so he couldn't go. And that's a, that's a, that's major for us. Uh, we, we we not only need his leadership, but we need his scoring. Yeah. Um, so he's playing a lot of minutes, probably playing a little more minutes than what I typically would like to have a guy play, but they're very necessary minutes. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, we've got to get him healthy and so he can he can get through the stretch of the season. Mm-hmm. Without him, we're, we're certainly a different type of team. Definitely. We have a few other players that are having a few nagging injuries yeah. here and there. Yeah, Ta- Tajay Byers has a has a – uh, turf toe or something like okay. that. Um, and so his injuries is major to us. He's not really able to get up and down the floor the way he would want to, but it does not keep him out, out of out of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, for the most part, though, those are those are the only two, but those are two big ones um, yeah. because we, we definitely need those two guys to play well for us to be have a chance to be a good team. Definitely, and uh, other players are going to have to step up and they're going to have to do it quick as the Vikings are back on the road this Sunday to face University of South Carolina Aiken. This will be the fourth time these teams have faced each other. Last contest was a 15-point Pacers win back in 2014, I believe. Coach, uh, USC Aiken is 4-0, and and it's another strong challenge uh, for our yeah. Vikings. What can we expect to see from the Pacers, and what must the Vikings do to steal a win down there? Well, well first and foremost, they're going to be an extremely formidable opponent, to say the least. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going on the road and, and, and going to be in a hostile environment. Um, they should probably get their students back to campus on Sunday. We'll play on Sunday <clears throat> after Thanksgiving. Um, they're a very, very, very good team. They've just they, they they beat a couple opponents that we're going to play that are that are really good opponents. Um, so it's going to be a very a tall task for us. Um, I have not begun to really prepare for them yet because I'm really, really concerned about our team. Yeah. I'm really concerned about what we have to do to get better, and we will prepare for them. Um, we'll need to play much, much better in order to have a chance to beat uh, USC Aiken. Um, because right now we just haven't played good basketball, um, <clears throat> but, but we're we're optimistic that we're going to get better. Um, so we got to get better in two days, yeah. travel, and go down there and get ready to compete. And uh, uh, and so we, we we will do that and and uh, and be high spirited and 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 you know we're forty minutes away from from being a different kind of team. So that's, that's right. what we're trying to go down there and do. That's right. This game will be played again this Sunday at three thirty, which is. Fairly uncommon. I mean, this. Uh, how does it does it have an effect on how the team prepares for this type of game? Uh, we read a we 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 read a book. We had a somewhat of a book club meeting in the preseason called "Who Moved My Cheese," mm-hmm. and, and it's it is a it is a book that that is uh, completely correlated to to dealing with change. Um, and, and in our locker room, one of the players wrote on the locker room, if, "If you don't change, you can become extinct," which is one of the quotes in the book. Mm-hmm. Um, so we prepare for um, different time changes. Uh, we had a 5:30 game, um, which is a little different at home uh, that we had to play before the women. We're going to play a 3:30 game on a Sunday. We're normally off on Sundays, um, but it doesn't matter when you play. You, you have to play well if you're going to win, That's right. <clears throat> and it prepares us for tournament play because we could have 11 o'clock game a.m. in the tournament, or a nine o'clock game in the tournament, or a nine o'clock game in the tournament p.m. Uh, so. Um, it doesn't really matter what time we play. Those games are we're on the road. We play at three thirty. We'll get there on Friday early. Get to relax, practice a little bit, and 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 be ready to get out of the hotel and play uh, at the designated hour. That's ECSU men's basketball head coach Sean Walker and Coach Walker. Thank you so much for talking Mighty Vikings basketball with us, and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having us. All right, make sure you stay with us. Coming up next, we'll talk ECSU Lady Vikings basketball with head coach Antonio Davis. You're listening to Viking Coaches Show on WRVS 89.9. Get your tickets now to see the Mighty Vikings in action online at ecsuvikings.com. 
WRVS FM 89.9, your community voice, would like to thank you for making the Coats in Totes Winter Coat Drive a success. Thanks to your donations of coats, hats, and gloves, we were able to help keep many kids and adults in Elizabeth City warm through the winter months. WRVS 89.9 would like to thank our partners for their support. Elizabeth City State University, College of the Albemarle, Elizabeth City Police Department, and Rochelle Cleaners in Elizabeth City. Coding our community with kindness. We're WRVS 89.9. Welcome back to Viking Coaches Show. I'm Clay Mercer, and I now have the pleasure of talking ECSU Lady Vikings basketball with head coach Antonio Davis. Coach Davis, Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family, and welcome to the show. Thanks, Clay. I certainly appreciate it, and we're happy to be here and get this show on the road. Yeah, Definitely, definitely. Coach, it's been an up-and-down start to the season for the Lady Vikings. Let's go ahead and give our listeners a little bit of a recap on how the season has gone so far. Of course, it started with an overtime loss to Gannon University. Uh, The first W of the season will come the next day, 80-79, to over Slippery Rock University. Uh, sure. The first home game saw the Lady Vikings lose a tough one to Puerto Rico Bayamen, 70-73, to and that was followed by a three-point victory over University of Mount Olive this past Saturday, and then a difficult loss on Monday to Barton College, 58-63. to We'll talk more about the Barton game in just a few moments, but okay. with a 2-3 and three record to start the season, Coach, it, it seems like we're still figuring some things out with the team. What have you learned about your team so far? Well, um, to be quite frank, um, I'm very happy – Um, with where we are right now in terms of development and understanding where we're trying to go as a program. Mm -hmm. Um, I intentionally scheduled a uh, tough schedule, if you will, in the beginning of the season um, just to see where we are Mm -hmm. as a unit. Mm -hmm. Uh, I knew I had a lot of new faces, um, and I thought that it would be beneficial to us to play a tough schedule from the beginning Mm -hmm. as opposed to um, a light schedule and just winning and not learn any lessons that Mm -hmm. I think will help us in the long run. So Mm -hmm. going up to Pennsylvania from the beginning was tough. Um, Conference challenge with the PSAC. Mm -hmm. Um, So we played two very quality opponents in Gannon and Slippery Rock. Um, Came out of there with a split. Um, Certainly had opportunity to beat uh, Gannon. And uh, we just didn't pull it off at the end. Um, So we were very excited about that um, Mm -hmm. start of the season. So as you said, a little up and down in terms of W's. Mm But um, I got to see where we were as a unit and how we could handle tough competition. Yeah, and, and I say it's been an up-and-down season, but even with the losses, they've been very close losses, a few Certainly. points away from a victory. It seems Certainly. like it's just a few pieces sure. uh, from where you want to be early on. Sure, sure, sure. And, and the thing about it, uh, which is encouraging, uh, these good opponents that we have are veteran ball clubs, mm-hmm. and they are NCAA-type ball clubs. That's right, yeah. Um, so that, that that was really a test. So, um you're very correct. Mm-hmm. We we had opportunity to win each game, yeah. um, which is encouraging. Um, even a couple of those ball games, we were behind mm-hmm. um, in double digits. So I, I got to see, and it was very encouraging that uh, our team will fight. Mm-hmm. And if you can come back and have an opportunity to win and be down double digits against quality opponents like we played, um, that's an indication um, that we're tough. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited about um, where we can go with that. Yeah. And then all of that will bode well once we get into the conference season, which sure. is coming up sure, that's uh, the plan. down the line. Definitely. Back on Monday in yes. the Vaughn Center, the Lady Vikings welcomed Barton College, a Division II team out of Conference Carolinas. It oh, was yeah. a back-and-forth battle in the first half with both teams tied at 29. Uh, senior guard and preseason All-CIAA first-team member Jalen Brown paced the Lady Vikings offensively with 11 first-half points. Coach, Neither team really shot the ball well sure, overall. Sure, so, sure. Um, but this was still anybody's ball game at, at halftime. Yes, yes. Um, again, quality opponent, mm-hmm. an NCAA team from last year um, that's returning, and an undefeated team thus far this that's year. That's true. That's true. Um, so, I, I was encouraged that we were able to hang in there blow for blow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the reason I like their team, which is very well coached by Wendy Sansing, who's a friend of mine, um, they play tough basketball. Mm-hmm. They play strong. Um, and that was a good test for us to be. This was like a fight. It's like a prize fight. Definitely. I mean, definitely. it was just blow for blow for yeah. blow, and it back and forth and back and forth. Very much so. And they were never really extended lead until probably early fourth quarter. That's right. Um, they got up a little bit on us, maybe eight points or so. Mm-hmm. And again, we fought back, and um, we were in a nip and tuck ball game in the last minute of the game. That's correct. And actually, uh, last had the last possession, one possession game down three, and uh, tried to run a play to get a shot off and didn't get it off. Um, so we took them down to the wire mm-hmm. and uh, very encouraging. Um, 
particularly with um, the Terry Luster That's right. going down, mm-hmm. you know, one of the top players in the CIAA, yeah, in definitely. my opinion, even though a newcomer, um, you know, averaging 20 and 14 early mm-hmm. in the season. I agree. So not to have her 20 um, and to hang in there with that caliber team right. is very encouraging. Definitely. I believe that also. Of course, the Lady Vikings come away with a 59-63 loss, but senior Kiana Wynn played well in the post for Barton. She sure. scored 24 points uh, in the second half of her game-high 26. Coach, uh, she asserted herself after halftime. Sure. Uh, what made her such a difficult matchup for the <laughs> podcast? <laughs> Kiana's a difficult matchup for everybody. <laughs> um, as you say, she's a quality player, senior All-American candidate, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the best players in her region. Um, so she's done this all along. She's like a career, you know, 18-point, 12-rebound player mm-hmm. um, and has been all, actually all-conference in that league for three – Straight years, wow. and certainly will be this year. And like I said, probably player of the year in that mm-hmm. year, uh, in that conference, rather. Um, so not surprised at all um, that she would get there. That's just that caliber of competition again mm-hmm. and a good test for us so we could actually see again. This is what high-quality opponents do. Yeah. Um, when you hold a quality opponent and a quality player down, um, they're going to come back and fight. Very much so. And uh, Kiana just a great post player, mm-hmm. and uh, she just you know imposed her will on us during the second half. Definitely. Yes. You're listening to Viking Coach So Clay Mercer here with ECSU women's head basketball coach Antonio Davis. Coach, uh, we talked about the teams not shooting the ball well sure. overall in that game. Sure. And it seemed like we missed numerous shots very close to the basket. Sure. I think other fans may have seen that also who were in the Vaughn Center that night. How concerning is that for you at this part in the season? Sure. Well, it's always concerning when you can't finish close to the bucket. Mm-hmm. Um because if you execute and get the shots you want, certainly you want to finish. Um, I would not be concerned at this point. Um, we would hope that was an aberration mm-hmm. and not the norm. Um, so we will see. Uh, so I'm not concerned. Yeah. Um, now, if we do that two, three, four games in a row, then we're a little concerned. <laughs> but um, hopefully that was just one of those ball games where we didn't finish because uh, actually up to this point we we shot the ball fairly well. Mm-hmm. Um we just did not finish that game, That's which right. is a tough game not to do it. Because yeah. if we finished well, we, we win that game. Definitely, yeah, um, I agree. So that was the difference in Kiana and us, that mm-hmm. actually that game. Got it. Kiana finished their buckets. Yeah, that's true. And that's uh, true. we did not. So that was the difference in the ball game. So we'll see what happens down the road. Coach, you brought this up a few minutes ago, and I'm glad we're getting into it now. Let's go ahead and, and get into an injury report type of situation. Sure, and we have sure. to start off with the injury to junior forward Nateria Luster. Uh, the Richmond, Virginia native seemed to slip on the court, but it was a little bit more than a slip we found sure, out. So uh, sure. give us a little bit of update on her status and any other players that are dealing with any injury. Sure. Well, um, obviously, um, Nateria is a great uh, basketball player. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, she's a great human being. Um, we're certainly glad to have her here yeah. um, to be able to add – you know, as we build a program, that quality of player and human being mm-hmm. um, is exciting. Um, unfortunately, uh, she her knee buckled the other night, and um, she was hurt. Um, we, we're waiting on the prognosis. Mm-hmm. Um, she saw the orth- orthopedic surgeon, and we're waiting on the report from the M- MRI. Yeah. Um, but hopefully it's just a meniscus mm-hmm. and not an ACL, so we, we'll see what happens. Um but again, to, to not have her and um, have an opportunity to win oh, yeah. um, is very encouraging. Yeah. Um, but again, shows our will as a team that we didn't give up. Mm-hmm. And um, But hopefully she'll be back. If not, um, we just have to move on mm-hmm. and do well. You know, Next woman up is our philosophy. Mm-hmm. And um, the next person has to be ready. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, we certainly hope to have her back because yeah. anytime you lose a, a, a player of the year, caliber player, yeah, I agree. it's certainly um, – not beneficial to your team. I agree. But we have to figure it out as a unit. Mm-hmm. That's why it's a team. That's true. That's very you gotta true. got to figure out how to move on. There's really not anyone else um, that has anything other than a little nagging injury, soreness, uh, you know, sprained ankles that are, you know, coming into place, but nothing tough. You know, fingers that are jammed, mm-hmm. you know, those kinds of things. Yeah. So, relatively speaking, uh, we've been quite healthy thus far. That's we hope we good. still can 
carry that throughout the season. Because that's always the key. Definitely. Health. Definitely. Viking Coaches Show, Clay Mercer here with ECSU head coach Antonio Davis. And with the injury to Luster, you know, our Lady Vikings, as you just said, are going to have to step up to the very next Absolutely. challenge, and uh, which comes up on November 28th as we host Newport News Apprentice School in the RL Vaughn Center. Now, of course, we talked about this earlier. The game was originally uh, looked like it was scheduled to be on the road, sure. a little conflict with the schedule, sure, but uh, it was recently changed and uh, it'll take place right here in Elizabeth City. Coming out of the Thanksgiving break, Coach, it's another opportunity for team growth. And although it looks to be an easy W on paper, <laughs> uh, you cannot <laughs> overlook any team never, on the schedule. Never, never. Yeah. Absolutely can't do that. Um, we fear no opponent, but we respect all opponents. Yeah. Um, that's one of our mantras as well. Um, so we have to go in there focused mm-hmm. um, as we try to gain a little momentum as we get ready for conference play, which will be the following Monday um, against Claflin University, not to get ahead of ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, but we want to get some momentum coming back off the break. So, um, sure, certainly we're better than them on paper, um, but you can't go into the ball game like that because you can really get stung mm-hmm. and find yourself in a ball game and going down the stretch, anything can happen. That's right. So we'll see what happens on uh, next Wednesday. Sounds good. Again, yes. Coach Davis, uh, happy Thanksgiving to happy you Thanksgiving and your family. To you and yours. And I look forward to seeing you next week. All the fans. We appreciate it very much. Thanks for having us, and we look forward to keeping it going. Yeah. For Coach Davis and Coach Walker, I'm Clay Mercer. Thank you all for listening to Viking Coaches Show, and we'll see you next time. Vikings Coaches Show is produced at the WRVS-FM studios on the campus of Elizabeth City State University.